So welcome to 1990. My name is Amanda O'Shea from the Serendipity Experience and I have a lovely guest here, Mr. Dan Wingard from the Seattle area. Hiya Dan, how you doing? I'm doing great. How you doing Amanda? Yeah, good, good. Nice to see you here um, online from the other side of the pond. I've yes. Been, uh, I've been um, interviewing a few of you guys from over over that way, and um, it's like your, your afternoon is is my my night time. So, um. <laughs> and I'm feeling so international right now. So, oh, thanks yeah. for that. Yes. <laughs> you're now an international speaker. <laughs> I'm, I'm culturally richer for having this conversation. With you. <laughs> well, there are ninety um, powerful little conversations with ninety fabulous people. Over That's amazing. 90 days. And I love, I love that. that. I love that, Dan, that when um, you come on the call, you're like, well, when, when, did, you, when did you decide to do this? Because we had a call about two weeks ago. It's like, I don't know. I just, I just had an idea. And, just, <laughs> and now we're on number 15. That's what. Not, just you know, warmed up. Yeah, but not that, I wanna, not that I wanna number you, but that's what I'm doing. So there you well, go. I hope you don't stop after this. <laughs> I don't know. I keep, I keep, I feel like I'm on the countdown. I don't know if that's a good sign, but I, you can add that then this internet, you know, this international, uh, you can add that to your title because you know, you are, um, a transformative coach. Yeah. And, um, I know that you work international in transformative inter coach. <laughs> international <laughs> transformative coach that works in the world of, uh, real estate for many years. You've yeah. been in that business and coach within that business. But you also have been coaching over the last few years in the sort of chemical um, dependency recovery area. Correct. So, and that's that's where that's where we connected. So yes. um, it's it's really lovely to um, to know that we are going to be um, spending some some time together online, and then next year over in the uh, conference, the the first ever Three Principal Addictions Conference that's happening in Minnesota. And I love how we connected because it's all about the fun. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're the fun committee. We are. The, that, oh, I like that, that, you know, I like that. Like, you know, we were on this committee organizing it with Joe Bailey and all that gang. And I was like, yeah, is there any, you know, is there anything light? Are we gonna have any entertainment or music? And then you're like, yeah, I'll, I'll, be, in, I'll be in that camp. <laughs> I'll be in that camp. Because you are a musician, huh? you are an yep. artist and a professional drummer. Is yeah, that... professional drummer for years and most recently singer songwriter and kind of putting some words and music around some of the three principles ideas. So that's, that's, that's I'm going there a little bit. That's great. I look forward to that and I look forward to us, um, yeah, being part of, the, the, part of that kind of um, the, the, we're going to be part of the gang that brings some, yeah, some light and some fun yeah. to, the, to, to, to the event. And so uh, we we'll, say that all the speakers aren't incredibly fun. No, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely. That, right? They're all actually, they are, aren't they? That's what's so they lovely. Are. Everyone's, yeah. you know, everyone holds their own health. Everybody yeah. is, is able to work in the world of, of addiction and recovery. I think in that way and not get burnt out because they're, you know, they bring their lightheartedness with them. And yeah, so it's a pleasure that we're going to be meeting and we'll be the meet and greet committee. So any yeah. of you who are watching this, who are coming along to that three principal addiction conference in May, then you will see Dan and myself there. And um, so we'll have plenty of time to uh, listen to, I'm hoping you're going to, you're going to play or you're going to keep it a surprise or what is it? You, yeah. Is it, is it in the bag? Is it out the bag? I don't know yet. I don't know what the what the plan is. I, it would be a privilege to play. Uh, I've got some ideas around that, so we're still in the planning process. So it's a it's it's a surprise. Yeah, I like no, I but, like that. There's there's quite a few musicians, hey, around, you know, in the, in the sort of three principal community it seems to be, and that goes hand in hand. You know, that goes hand in hand. I love this title that um that you gave to tonight's little chat. Actually, little conversation is listen to the music of life yeah well do you want me to expand on that kind of how i came up with that and uh, yeah and I'd, yeah i'd love to i'd love i'd love to hear that one of the things that i heard and i'm not sure if it was from george kransky 
or Michael Neal. And I've been involved with the three principles for a couple years now. And it was first through Michael Neal in the Inside Out Revolution and then just expanding to, um, I think he mentioned George Pransky. And then I found out that George and Linda were in my backyard and I got to go to an event uh, for them. And so it just coincided like that. But it was in Sid Banks or just not really uh, take notes or study intellectually, but listen to this like a piece of music, you know, the, okay. the three principles understanding. And the first event that I went to was George and Linda Pransky. It was a, a leadership event that they hold every year. And I was frantically taking notes. I mean, it was just so rich and, and George in his, his slow, um, just, wonderful way of connecting I actually was able to write down you know the the incredible points and then we took a break and they I don't know if they said something or one of we got together with the leadership group and and it was kind of like don't take any notes listen to this just allow what's happening in the moment and like a piece of music listening and so as a musician I really connected with that because I think there's something about music that brings a, a sense of presence and so uh, when I'm playing, uh, most of the time, I'm not all caught up in what's happening with life and thinking ahead, thinking behind, woulda, coulda, should, all of this. I'm just in the moment. And, and, and with the three principles, I'm, I'm learning. I don't even know if that's the right word. I'm experiencing, um, and I'll kind of go back to this, but to live life in the moment as if it's a piece of music instead of you know, I've got this plan. I'm going to, I'm going to make all of this happen. Um, but almost never being present to what's showing up right now. And, um, so even my learning of the three principles was, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to study it. And I, I just dug into all of the materials and, and I still, okay, I haven't really got it yet. I'll, I'll still have some of those thoughts. And so I thought it would be a good title to say, listen to the music of life of it, it's just so easy to get caught up in everything but where we are in the moment and I still do I've you know I've spent a lifetime doing that and uh, it's so refreshing to uh, discover more of the nature of thought that is just thought and um, and to really experience whatever's showing up and I used to think I was chasing the happy thoughts, the, you know, the feel good, which I love pointing to the good feeling that we talk about in the three principles, but not chasing as if it's something out there. It's like really uh, in the moment, appreciating whatever's showing up. And like with music, there's, you know, there's some high happy notes or some low, sad, minor things going on. And such is life. It's not always woohoo. Yeah. Everything should be great. And if it's not, I need to fix it. Yeah. So that's, that's kind so of nice. a, Yeah, that yeah. is so nice. And I've heard that being referred to as well, like let this wash over you. Like because we don't do that, do we? We don't number one, I don't think most people listen to music actually in the way that we don't listen to music enough, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and I had that um, experience. I realized when I had my uh, radio show and I used to be on my own in the studio was the first time I heard many songs mm. because I'd realized that I didn't really, really listen to the music and, and let alone the words, you know, put the words to one, <laughs> put the words to one side. Uh, uh, you know, I, 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 we don't break it down. I mean, even as a musician, I don't, I love music and I love being around music and um, I, so, but I don't read it or anything, but even, even with a musician who does, you don't, you'd never break it down, would you, when you're listening to a piece of music? I mean, unless you're learning a song, unless you're learning right. to play. Yeah. Well, I find if I do, I'm not uh, truly appreciating it. I'm getting into, well, maybe I'm appreciating a different quality quality or aspect of it but I love what you said about just you know letting it wash over you or just really listen and what came to me as you were saying that is in life um, when we're just there's so much more like there's all there's an infinite um, creativity or ability to explore in the moment 
and we pass by so much of it thinking things should be a certain way or wish they could could be a certain way and i think if we uh or when when we allow life to show up and and to just be present with what is as we listen you know like you're talking about listening to a piece of music and um really i don't know slowing down is the right word but really being present with um, mm -hmm. allowing it to to wash over i think there's something there because it, it touches it touches your heart right yeah like, that's that's the thing i think when you sit in your in your one of those you know you want to george pransky's gatherings or jack pransky's or dickin bettinger's or any you know those guys that i've sort of spent a lot of time listening to it's like something just touches your heart and that can happen to yeah. everybody you don't have to be listening to george or jack or linda or you know yeah. like every conversation that's every conversation in 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 our life has the power if we kind of were to listen to it yeah to, we all to, have that in us that's a, that's a part of every yeah. single one of us that creativity that infinite that potential life. that magic of the moment is yeah. is there yeah. So I, I just, as, as a musician, and I was, and you know, I love practicing the guitar and there's so much that I don't know. There always will be, right? But I found even there that as I slow down and I really just appreciate the different intricacies of the moves and, and then flowing together. And, and for me, when I play the guitar and, and sing, there's so many different facets of that. There's the right hand, left hand, you're doing this, you're um, doing all these different things and learning to appreciate that versus it used to be just, I'm so freaking frustrated. Like I just, I should have this down already. You know, this I'll, I'll repeat, um, little phrases over and over and over again. And having been a drummer for years and just being able to sit down and just not even think about it and play now I'm, you know, with it, with a newer instrument, I used to get so frustrated. Well, I still do, but, mm -hmm. um, but uh, more and more, I'm I'm appreciating the learning process, the the each part of that, and I think that can be applied to life. It can, it's so easy to look at situations as frustrating, or um, you know what's going on in our lives as having to be different. Then I'll appreciate life, and I, I think that's what I'm I'm gaining more and more is that aspect of there's so much more behind the scenes, you know, that's always there and always available when I'm open to it instead of just wrapped up in my thoughts and my craziness, go, go, go mm. chasing that I've done all my life. Mm. So, Do you, yeah. I have such admiration for, for all the musicians because I think I'm like a, a frustrated musician. I've always wanted to be, you know, part of the band and up there. And I, I, I made this promise to learn, to learn to play the guitar for my 40th birthday. And uh, um, I, I, so it's 10 years ago. So I, I <laughs> learned one song. It took me a year. I thought and you just turned 40. I just turned 50, but you're, you're a charmer and you can, <laughs> you're a charmer. But um, I, it was, it was, like so exciting for me this idea of playing I had this thing that I was going to play in front of you know just my party mm -hmm. song that's all I've wanted I carried a guitar around or when I did all my traveling I, always, I had a guitar I don't know if I just looked good or felt cool or I couldn't even tune it but you know I just I just so much like wanted to be that girl that could pull the guitar out and just and, and as I tried to learn because I, what I wanted to do was sing. I didn't realize that till afterwards, but uh -huh. so I was, you know, I was wanting to sing. And so then I was, I had it, the singing going on and the, and the chord changes and the strum. And it was, it was all a bit much for me really, but um, it's, you know, it's not easy. It's not, it's not easy. So it's one of the, it's one of the, it's one of the, you know, when I look at, when I look at people playing them, you know their instruments and they're so in it and they're so in the moment this that's what's so attractive to me when you look at somebody who's playing and they are they're on an you know they're in their they're, they're on another planet they're they're yeah it's so beautiful it's so wonderful and and we can be like that on the recipient right so we get to watch yeah. that we get to see that like they're, they're in it and we get to observe that we get to witness that 
yeah, just you witnessing that and having an awareness that shows that you have that, you know, mm. you that ability to just be, be with that in different aspects of your life. Maybe it's not guitar for you, but in your singing or whatever that is and doing that. And I've got an interesting story and this is kind of how, um, this led to me being a part of this, um, with meeting with Joe Bailey is, um, uh, I, I heard a song, I heard, I read a, a poem, um, and, uh, it was, uh, called Lily's Loose and who, now I'm drawing a blank. Oh, Bill, um, Bill, Bill Pettit. Pettit. Yeah. Bill Pettit's, uh, previous wife. So I heard it and I thought that needs to be a song. And so I ended up putting music to it and I thought, wouldn't it be fun to have like Joe Bailey and Mark Howard, because I heard they played guitars. And so I just brought that up to them. I, and even, I wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out. I knew I was gonna go to an event in California. And it didn't end up that they were available to play, but I told Bill about it at the event. And I said, if we don't have an opportunity to perform it, I'll, I'll, take, I'll show you outside. I just think it'd be fun for you to show this little music. So I played it outside and the publisher of that uh, book of poetry heard me and said, you've got to do this in front of everyone. And so it ended up that I got to perform uh, in front of this group of practitioners. And uh, it was so fun. And I, I was, you know, Lily was loose. My brain was going crazy. Like, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I went ahead with it. And I share that because um, I think I, I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. I was just like, you know, I think there's something leading me to do this and I'm not going to stop short of, of not following through and connecting with people. I don't know. And I had no attachment to how it was going to turn out, whether I was going to play anything like that. But I said, I'm showing up with my guitar and I'll be ready to go. Oh, and I, I, and, and it's, um, I just want to encourage, you know, your, your listeners as far as just showing up for life, you know, when something calls you, when something speaks to you, that you step into that instead of how it should be, how it, you know, could all of those things. So. Oh, absolutely. Sure. That's yeah, no, absolutely Dan, because I think there's also, you know, um, there's no, no better way of watching thought play out, right? It's a great, great opportunity to see thought playing out by saying to somebody, well, get up here and play your guitar in front of a <laughs> hundred people. <laughs> you know, if you ever want to see thought in action, you know, right. That's, you know, that's kind of, a, there's, a, there's a friend of mine called Lisa Dandanel who does a sort of find your voice workshop. We've, we've run an event before and um, she does this, uh, invites people to get up and sing in front of a crowd and, and, and then, then the thinking starts. Oh, I can't yeah. sing. Oh, I don't know any words and this yeah. and that. And she's like, just even a chorus from a song, from a nursery rhyme, from a, and you watch the thinking and then, what's so amazing is as the thinking settles you see their voice improves mm, yeah right. and, and, and but maybe she's she has an art of the way that she makes it all happen but it's super and i see that as well i see that um you know people can be people play a lot uh, in their at home but the idea of playing in front of a crowd or in front of a crowd suddenly is thinking yeah it's all yeah. different things yeah. So, you know, what a great gift. I have another friend called Frederick too. Um, he's a psychiatrist and he plays the fiddle and he's, um, he's, uh, part of this gang and, um, what he really has a passion to bring sort of music to the world of psychiatry. So, mm. you know, there's something I maybe you know, that'd be nice. We'll have to gather all the musicians and yeah. I, we got ourselves a band. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> we got ourselves a band and <clears throat> that would be great. I never forget coming out of the first Jack Pransky training that I did and getting in, the, in my, in my camper van and listening to an album and it would have been something like a, a Bob Dylan or a Cat Stevens or something like that. Cause mm. that's, that's the only stuff I ever used to play. And, mm. um, and hearing all the songs, after doing this sort of first weekend of training, going, oh my God, <laughs> there's the, me the message is there, the message is there. Then I was like, I've listened to those CDs for like for 30 years or whatever, 20, 30 years. And yeah. suddenly, you know, when I was, when I really started to, to really get into this, which I think has happened, 
you know, you're introduced to something like the, what we'd call the inside out understanding or the principles. And it, and it seems to trickle in or it grasps you and you you know, you can't get enough of it. But yeah. everything for me looked different. Everything sounded different. Um, it, and especially the music. And I, I especially found myself saying, oh, you know, yeah, the message was there. And then I'd notice, no, that's not true. You know, the, the outside in, in yeah. the outside in words and the, you know, the inside in. And it, it's uh, so much of that in songs, right? The outside <laughs> yeah. And everything. Yeah. A lot of so, but we could do that. We could pull every song apart. Like we can pull everything apart as human beings. Yeah. You know, we like to pull things apart. We like to. You know, and, and the, the, the thing is, it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter what the words are. When you hear those classic songs that, that, that do something, you know, I'm in, I'm in the gospel choir at the moment mm. and, and I, I love it so much. Um, and we sing, sing songs and some of them I might have heard before and some of them I've never heard before, but the message is the same with different kind of words. They're pointing yeah. to the, they're pointing to the same thing. And, um, you know, when, when we play like at a wedding or we play somewhere where people haven't seen, seen us play, like there's something about gospel that touches people. Yeah. You know, it's, that's the rawness. That's the, but like sometimes we're singing in there and my, my, the hairs on my arms are just like, they they stood on end, you know. I love that. Yeah, and so I think that's what we're doing in our own little ways. We're just touching hearts and we're just nudging people and waking them up and, you know, pointing them to sort of, you know, see there's a there's a kind of simpler way, there's an easier way, there's a less complicated way to go about this. I agree, and, and yeah, there's just so much related to music and and. I love what you said as far as we just notice more like we've listened to the same song for years and and it starts to open up when we you know with our under, a level of understanding and so does life it's not just music but different things that we just notice differently uh from a a quieter mind or a settled mind that mm. uh, there's so much beauty there and availability for how lucky. How, it's exactly you know how lucky to you know, and the music is, is, it's sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's the silent singing, right? You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's the silent singing and, and, and so we're very lucky. We're very blessed. And I feel very blessed, Dan, that we have you on board for the committee, for mm -hmm. the conference. Um, I'm looking forward to hanging out more with you and, and getting to meet you all, you know, all the gang over there that I've, that I've only ever met virtually. So yeah, likewise. Yeah, so thank you for the music and thank you for the lovely energy and, um, and, and, and the graceful way in which you express yourself. So, um, yeah. Likewise. Gonna, yeah. So it's going to be fun. We've got lots to look forward to. So I think yeah. we'll say cheerio and, um, all right. yeah, so it's a good night from me in sunny Spain and it's a uh, good, good afternoon. afternoon. <laughs> Lots of love. Okay. Right. Bye Dan. Bye everybody. Bye.